Fucking shit, why is this game so lunadam hard? All right, what is this? Carbon emissions are rising and faster than most scientists predicted. But many climate change alarmists seem to claim that all climate change is worse than expected. A uh, fucking pager you, oh boy, I sure can't wait for them to not talk about anything important that's literally happening to our climate system right now. Or acknowledge geoengineering, which any discussion on the climate that doesn't first and foremost acknowledge that reality is a false discussion. Oh, so they don't have their head in the sand. Well, that's good at least. All right, let's take a look. Yes, Arctic sea ice is melting faster than models expected, but models also predicted that Antarctic sea ice would decrease, yet Antarctic sea ice is increasing. Antarctic sea ice is not increasing, though it did have some surges of growth at times, because when the land ice, which is made of fresh water, melts and runs off into the ocean, it refreezes because fresh water has a higher freezing temperature than salt water. But these uneducated conservatives won't tell you that because they don't know that themselves because they aren't interested in finding out what's really going on in the world, just whatever they perceive fits their political bias. The amount of ice is dramatically decreasing overall. So it's a good thing you have me here to set things straight. Links to everything will be in the description. Let's keep going. Yes, sea levels are rising, but the rise is not accelerating. If anything, two recent papers, one by Chinese scientists published in January 2014 and the other by US scientists published in May 2013, have shown a small decline in the rate of sea level increase. Just fucking stop right there, you fucking morons! I don't need to see whatever bullshit papers you're citing here because there's already been plenty of reports admitting that previous predictions for sea level rise are being ass-raped by reality, which is that in the next 50 years we'll be getting 10 feet of sea level rise if we're fucking lucky! 10 times faster than previous consensus. Get your fucking facts straight. We're often being told that we're seeing more and more droughts, but a study published in March 2014 in the journal Nature actually shows a decrease in the world's surface that has been afflicted by droughts since 1982. That drought research data is wrong. Their regional imaging shows the west coast of the US completely drought free, when we know it's been in an eight year drought that is the worst drought ever recorded in history for the area over 250 inches of rain short, which is being completely engineered. So that's another busted fact. Uh, we're only one minute in. Can I stop watching this shit video now? Uh, okay, fine, I'll keep going. But I already know everything else they're going to say is going to be stupid. Facts like these are important because a one-sided focus on worst-case stories is a poor foundation for sound policies. Hurricanes are likewise used as an example of things getting worse. But look at the US, where we have the best statistics. If we adjust for population and wealth, hurricane damage during the period of 1900 to 2013 actually decreased slightly. Look up hurricane suppression technology. Also, the amount of damage done is a stupid method to measure the weather by anyways. Do you think our civilization hasn't advanced at all in the past hundred years? Besides, we're talking about a global system and hurricanes are a major part of the energy transfer of that system. The energy from the hurricanes doesn't just go away. You need to see how everything is affecting everything else in order to have an idea of what's going on on such a global scale. Here, after doing some searching, I found better evidence than what you present in this video that apparently our global accumulated cyclone energy which says it includes hurricanes as well, has actually declined overall, even though at the same time we have strong correlative evidence to show that Hurricane Power Dissipation Index, PDI, gets stronger the warmer the ocean waters are, and we know for certain that the ocean temperatures are rising like crazy. So from this I can conclude, and some of the reports say this themselves, that we don't know enough about hurricanes yet to be sure what's happening and is going to happen. It's ongoing research. I can't say for sure that humans suppressing hurricanes is the only reason for this downturn, or if there's other factors that influence this graph. I can say for certain though that the reason there hasn't been any major landfall hurricanes to hit the US in the past decade is because of the US suppressing them. At the UN climate conference in Lima, Peru in December 2014, attendees were told that their countries should cut carbon emissions to avoid future damage from storms like Typhoon Hagupit, which hit the Philippines during the conference, 
killing at least 21 people and forcing more than a million into shelters. Yet the trend for strong typhoons around the Philippines have actually declined since 1950, according to a study published in 2012 by the Journal of Climate. Again, we're told that all things are getting worse, but the facts don't support this. I really love the taste of cherries. This does not mean global warming is not real or a problem, but the one-sided story of alarmism makes us lose focus. If we want to help the world's poor, who are the most threatened by natural disasters, it's less about cutting carbon emissions than it is about pulling them out of poverty. Yeah, let's keep being a consumerist society dependent on oil so we need to keep raping and pillaging the rest of the world for their natural resources to meet our socially engineered consumerist desires. That will get those third world countries out of poverty. Oh wait! The best way to see this is to look at the world's death from natural disasters over time. In the Oxford University database for death rates from floods, extreme temperatures, droughts, and storms, the average in the first part of last century was more than 130 dead every year per million people. Since then, the death rates have dropped 97% to a new low in the 2010s of less than 4 per million. The dramatic decline is mostly due to economic developments that help nations withstand catastrophes. If you're rich like Florida, a major hurricane might cause plenty of damage to expensive buildings, but it kills few people and causes only a temporary dent in economic output. If a similar hurricane hits a poorer country like the Philippines or Guatemala, it kills many more people and can devastate the economy. So let's be clear, climate change is not worse than we thought. Yes, it fucking is. I like how you tried to sneak that in there though. Shows how honest you are. That doesn't mean it's not a reality or not a problem. It is. Just not a problem you're willing to do anything about, right? But the narrative that the world's climate is changing from bad to worse is unhelpful alarmism that prevent us from focusing on smart solutions. That's not a narrative. It's a verifiable fact, you nimrod. A well-meaning environmentalist might argue that because climate change is a reality, why not ramp up the rhetoric and focus on the bad news to make sure the public understands its importance? Er, ju you just made a straw man out of nowhere! Who has ever said something like that?! But that's exactly what we've done for the past 20 years. Fuck all but rhetoric. Yeah, I fucking know. My inherited planet is fucking dying thanks to assholes like you. Okay, so the last minute of this is a bunch of non-sequiturs tied together only by them coming one after another out of his mouth, some of which defeat others, so I'm really having a hard time to even coming up with something to say in response. It's sophistry, basically. Yet despite dramatic headlines, apocalyptic documentaries, and annual climate summits, carbon emissions continue to rise. Because of idiots like you actively muddying the waters and not changing your behaviors. Especially in rapidly developing countries like India, China, and many African nations. So remember, it's less about cutting carbon emissions than it is about pulling them out of poverty. Which makes carbon emissions continue to rise. Because alarmism has encouraged the pursuit of a one-sided climate policy of trying to cut carbon emissions by subsidizing wind farms and solar panels. I got nothing. Yet today, according to the International Energy Agency, only about 0.4% of global energy consumption comes from solar photovoltaics and windmills. Why did you only include solar and wind in your analysis? Are you stupid or are you just trying to cover for some political agenda of yours again? Your own source, the International Energy Agency, says that in 2013, renewable energy accounted for almost 22% of global electricity generated. And even with exceptionally optimistic assumptions about future deployment of wind and solar, the International Energy Agency expects that these energy forms will provide a minuscule 2.2% of the world's energy by 2040. In other words, for at least the next two decades, solar and wind energy are simply expensive, feel-good measures that will have an imperceptible climate impact. In other words? Where the fuck were the initial words that you said that meant this? What the fuck are you even saying anymore? Instead, we should focus on investing in research and development of green energy to lower its costs. So everyone will want it, including China and India. But solar energy is already a cheaper energy to produce than fossil fuels in many parts of the world. This article by The Telegraph says that there are already 19 regional markets around the world that have achieved grid parity, meaning that photovoltaic solar panels can match or undercut local electricity prices without subsidy, 
California, Chile, Australia, Turkey, Israel, Germany, Japan, Italy, Spain, and Greece for residential power, as well as Mexico and China for industrial power. We urgently need a more balanced climate conversation if we are to make sensible choices and pick the right climate policy that can actually help fix climate change. Why do you now say this is something urgent when this entire video you've been downplaying the effects of global warming and intentionally omitting the cause of that warming, which is the runaway greenhouse effect that we're in the middle of, even going so far as to say, Climate change is not worse than we thought. Who are you trying to fool here exactly? My guess is yourself.